evening to you all and a very warm QPAC welcome to you. We're delighted that you could be here with us this afternoon. Um, may I begin by acknowledging the traditional lands upon which we sit here tonight and um, just uh, know that Karupa Point is a very special place for performance and for gathering. Um, let me introduce our panel this afternoon. Our panel, uh, first of all, uh, choreographer extraordinaire, Christopher Wilden. <laughs> and Jackie Barrett, who is Christopher's, um, uh, what is your official title? <laughs> Assistant. Assistant. So, so Jackie. so hard working that she arrived in Australia without any voice at all, but I'm very glad to say she's found it. <laughs> and Kevin O'Hare, who, well, I'm going to start by asking Kevin in a moment what he does, because people have been asking me, what does a director do? Because he's got all these people, 185 people here, so what is it that he does? Uh, but before we do that, I just want to um, take you through how the afternoon will be. Uh, in just a moment, um, we'll have a bit of a chat and Kevin will introduce us uh, to the company. Uh, there are uh, 185 members of the company here, which is an extraordinary thing for a city like Brisbane to host. So um, we're very grateful to all powers that have made that happen. Uh, but also, um, to let you know that this is really just a small part, the performances which you're probably going to see or have seen, is a small part of a much larger residency program. And tonight's Creative Insight is part of that, as well as a beautiful project called Let's Dance, uh, which has been working with two of the teaching artists from the Royal Ballet, um, and actually um, a performance, and that project, um, Let's Dance, is happening in Cairns in North Queensland. So Kevin, a few people have said to me, there are all these talented choreographers. You're the director, what do you do? <laughs> oh, I, I beg your pardon. Paul Stoddard is at the back here. <laughs> My apologies, Paul. Account for yourself, yes, young man. Yes, yeah. <laughs> no, I just come to Brisbane and watch some nice ballet and have a barbecue and then come home and go. Um, no, uh, it is, uh, it's always hard to describe what you do uh, every day, but I'm in charge of the company, the overall vision of uh, what the Royal Ballet is, and uh, I think it's my job to nurture the the dancers, the young talent in the company, the, the more senior talent in the company, and also um, to dis, uh, decide what works we're going to perform, how we're going to perform them, and, uh, and also with a company like the Royal Ballet, which has such a heritage, it's, it's uh, very important to find the right balance in the, in the sort of works we present over a year. Uh, when I took over, when I, I got the position, uh, probably with one of the first things I did was to ask Christopher Wielden to be an artistic associate for the company. Um, and I think that's one of my top decisions, the best <laughs> decisions I've made, really, I think. Um, of course, uh, I didn't know Christopher very well because I was a dancer with the Birmingham Royal Ballet and then when I stopped dancing, um, worked with them for quite a while. And so it was only... Um, just before actually I took over as company manager with the Royal Ballet that I'd seen odd little bits of, of Christopher's work but I remember going to see the Royal Ballet and I saw Polyphonia which was taken into the, into the repertoire and seeing that one ballet I just thought this is a major, major choreographer of um, today. That particular ballet, I think, is, is, a, is masterly, and I think what it is about it is that it's such a, a pure dance work, and to what you would uh, describe as maybe uh, quite difficult, challenging music, and what I loved about the choreography was it really m made you hear the music in a different way, and brought that, uh, brought the two worlds together in such an extraordinary um, uh, 
collaboration that I really felt that this obviously is a, a really talented choreographer. And then, lucky enough, I was then working with the Royal, Royal Ballet's company manager and, and administrative director. So over that time, got to know and see Christopher's work and see how extraordinary the range of work is as well. So you can have something like Polyphonia and then you can have something like Alice, which is a few, pure theatrical uh, extravaganza with great choreography, but also great theatricality and, and, and care about the characters. And so you're drawn into whatever world Christopher wants to take you in. Um, uh, I was talking this afternoon, going back to your role, Kevin, and I guess this is going to be applauded to you, but um, I was talking with the Chief Executive, John Kotzis, this morning, and I said, um, we, I've been involved in all the international series, as all of us who work here have, and they've all been very special in their own way, but what's been really special about having the Royal here has been um, just the way in which everyone, from the, the dancers to everyone with interacted with seems to want seems to resonate and seems to want to connect and that's very special and that hasn't happened every time and I said to John why is this happening why is this being such a special tour and John said um, it's because of the direction he said they're a company that are very clear about their direction they know where they're going and they know where they've come from so Take that as a compliment. Mm -hmm. um, okay, before we um, ask you, before, uh, before we ask you to talk about Christopher and Jackie, um, uh, uh, last time when we interviewed Wayne, I gave some adjectives. So I wanted to give I wanted to give some adjectives, and you can either refute them or agree. Um, an uber talented, um, elegant, spirited. Are you supposed to talk about me? <laughs> 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 and, and deeply connected human being. They're, they're the mm. phrases that came to mind when I thought about Christopher. So can you tell us a bit about him? Maybe we'll ask Jackie who's going to describe <laughs> Christopher. No, I'd agree with those. Yeah, no, definitely. For sure, for yeah. sure. And I think what's uh, the sort of human side of Christopher as well is you sort of wonder sometimes where all of this how he can be, how he, how he is, and yet such wonderful creativity comes out and so many, in so many different ways, and, and it just sort of seems to happen, you know, an extraordinary... Well, the first piece we're going to see this evening, mm -hmm. I remember going into the rehearsal studio with you, and you, you said to me, I've got a step in my head, and I went, don't worry, it'll happen, and you'll see what happened. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite amazing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think for, for the company, I think, um, you know, Christopher had already been involved working um, on, on various uh, different ballets, you know, uh, creating different uh, works for us. And uh, then when Monica Mason was the director, um, I think for quite a while she was talking to you about creating a, a, a new a full length, length work. Yeah. Because in the end, it was 17 years since uh, we'd had a new, brand new created work, full length ballet, for the Royal Ballet when Christopher did Alice in Wonderland. But uh, it was quite a few years, and you were at first a little reluctant to go down that route. It's yeah, it's sort of, it's, so we sort of got to the place um, probably six, maybe six or seven years into Monica asking where I felt like I had to say yes because I was, I just, you know, I, I couldn't say no to her one more time and, and, and in the end it was the pressure of, um, of actually committing and then, then f sort of focusing on, um, on different you know, stories and um, different pieces of literature to try and figure, figure out which, which should be my, my first work and that's actually why I ended up choosing Alice and not The Winter's Tale um, because Alice is is quite um, it's episodic and quite free in a, in a sense and allows for a lot of variety and so I felt comfortable with that and then once Alice um, you know proved to work then uh, then then I then I gained my confidence um, and took on one of the most knotty yeah. complex <laughs> <laughs> stories in the in the Shakespeare canon. Yeah. Um, I mean I think it was a great idea to go with Alice at first really and also as you say it was episodic but also drawing on 
all your different uh, parts of your life in a way. Yeah. The, the styles of dancing, you know, the, so you have the narrative, but you also have the fun moments, the, the sort of Britishness of it as yeah, well. Yeah. And uh, I think that's why it's worked so well. The, the Mad Hatter even dances. Part of the set is an exact replica of the Pollock's toy theatre that I had in my bedroom as a oh, little boy. <laughs> um, and I was like, Bob, can we get this in the show? I feel like the Mad Hatter should sort of emerge from, you know, a giant sized Pollock's toy theatre. So, mm, beautiful. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I know that um, last insight, people absolutely loved looking at you, uh, looking at Wayne working with the dancers. Yeah. So could we ask you to go absolutely. to that now? Yeah, so absolutely. would you like to introduce your dancers? Yes, um, so we have um, Akane Takada and Alexander Campbell somewhere off in that side room. Guys, if you want to come out, uh, that would You'll be come, fantastic. They'll come to them. Here they come. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so these fabulous guys are, um, play Florizel and, uh, and Perdita in one of the casts of Winter's Tale. And um, they, have, they have a duet in sort of the central duet of the second act, which is, um, it's sort of, we had, to, we had to conjure, one of the challenges, I suppose, of, of Winter's Tale um, is, is, the, is the, 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 dual, the duality of the play, the two different locations, um, Cecilia uh, is sometimes presented as a very kind of traditional Sicilian type castle um, and so at least with, with, with Cecilia you can kind of figure out what Cecilia is. Bohemia on the other hand is quite a tricky place to sort of conjure up and so Bob Carley and I spent a, 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 a lot of um, uh, of time sort of agonizing over should it be by the sea, should we see the sea, should it be rolling hills, um, is it a village, um, and in the end we landed on I think one of the most beautiful pieces of scenery like, ever to grace the stage. Um, Bob's an absolute genius and he came up with this idea of just a very simple tree, a very beautiful simple tree. <laughs> The now very famous tree, <laughs> and um, and the idea for the tree actually came from um, from uh, some very beautiful uh, garden sculptures that we that we that we found an artist actually who um, grew, grows moss up uh, stone structures and um, and trees and old um, dead trees and very very beautiful work, um, so that's why the tree is all green. Um, anyway. That was a very long way round to say that um, we we decided not to set it at a sheep shearing festival in, in the um, in, perhaps for obvious reasons, um, and we we called it a springtime festival. And I was also quite inspired by um, uh, a wishing tree that I'd seen in Seattle. That was quite near the ballet. I was working in with the Pacific Northwest Ballet, and there was this beautiful wishing tree. People had. Um, tied these, these the, you know, their wishes to, to, the, to the branches of the tree, and so there are the ornaments that hang from this uh, beautiful Bob Crowley tree, and so we kind of made it like a springtime ritual. All the villagers um, in this community gather together one day a year, and they celebrate Mother Earth, and they celebrate the, the, the spring, the beginning of spring, and the and the bounty of the of the land, and and at the centre of this are the, these two lovers. Um, um, Prince uh, Florizel, who is, you know, um, actually quite an interesting parallel to the prince in Giselle. I'm sure many of you know the story of Giselle. Albrecht comes into the um, into the into the village. He's fallen in love with the peasant girl Giselle, and he takes takes off his um, off his princely garb and locks it away in a in a cottage. And it wasn't actually until we really got going on on Winter's Tale that I realised the parallel between Florizel and Albrecht. You know, also a prince, also in love with the in in love with a, a village girl, also hides his princely garb. Um, well, he does in our production anyway. So, an even longer way round of saying <laughs> at the centre of this scene is a duet for the two of them. And, and I like to kind of think of it as um, Perdita having taught Florizel, because Florizel, of course, has been off at, at the castle and doesn't really know about this festival, but that she's kind of taught him the, the, the lover's ritual and that this duet is kind of, it's, it's part lover's duet, but it's also part sort of uh, local ritual, perhaps a couple are chosen every year to dance this particular dance, so it has a sort of 
um, yeah, sort of a ritualistic Richard. feeling. Mm. So, okay, shall we? Let's have them dance. I'll shut up. <laughs> Slower, please, Paul. They're going to be so beautiful that we're just going to want to keep watching them. And I'm not going to end up having anything to say. But as they know me well, they know me well enough to know that I always have something to say, um, even when it's that kind of perfect. Um, so just at the very beginning, just, let's just look at the, just the first couple of steps. See, yeah, see if you can just resist the temptation to go before. It should be like his touch sends a shiver down your arm, yeah? And sometimes you just go a little, anticipate it slightly. Good. T bomb. T and good and T. Okay, so this one, this one should be um, this little flex. You have so much respect for the land that you've grown up on. So it's like, it's like, the, most, it's like the most delicate little heel tap Breezy. Yeah, you can let that go more, can't you? Let, let, just let your upper body go a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, like he's not partnering you, but it's the breeze that's pushing you forwards. Yeah, good. Um, lift is lovely. Roll is lovely. Kiss is extra lovely. Um, coming out of it's lovely. Still, there's still a little bit of a moment. I just want that to be that, that next. That, and, and, for, and for you, um, Alex, it's like you're... It's, it's like you're, um, you're showing her the land. You know, you're showing her, or maybe you're pointing, pointing, her, pointing her to the future that you could have together. And I kind of really follow that. It's like take in, take, in the, take in the land or the future that he's showing you. Yeah? For me. And, you know what it is? It's like it's, it's, it's stunning until, until it isn't, which is... <laughs> Which is when you sort of let her go into the split at the end, it just gets a little bit gymnastic. Maybe don't go so deep and don't go so, don't allow yourself to go into that bendy place. Maybe travel a tiny bit more too. First beat. What's that? First beat. First beat, yeah. It's better. So it's still a bit like, and not, like a, like a, like a, um, yeah, like a journey, like a voyage. It's too low. There we go. That's lovely. And then don't give me that extra little, don't give her the extra little hike. No. See if you can just make, so as she, as she, um, as she comes out of the beach, just see if it, you maybe if you do it in, if you actually breathe there and lift yourself a little bit rather than actually physically lifting her. Yeah. Yeah. One more time. That's, that's much better, much better here. Keep going. Ting, tum, tum, ting, bum. There, okay, good. Now here, I know you have this in you, it's quite fast, but sometimes you just go boom, and I wanna see you go boom. Yeah, right from the front. And and uh, And better, good, yeah, lovely. Uh-huh. 
Good, okay, let's go from left. Yeah. With music, please, Paul. Um, and for those of you that haven't seen, for those of you that haven't seen the ballet, um, there's, there's a, ex oh, yeah, Jax, I've got it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, there's an extraordinary, uh, Joby Talbot, the composer, is, has, um, has created this extraordinary uh, sort of, um, what are they? The wind chimes, aren't yes. they? They're wind chimes. Mm -hmm. So there are wind chimes in the pit um, that we always have quite a hard time figuring out how, how to mic them because they should feel like they're just kind of, that it's a texture that's sort of hanging in the air rather than, you know, rather than we're sitting out on the porch on a windy day. Um, and uh, so this, this whole uh, part of it has this, uh, this beautiful kind of texture of, of sound that just sort of hangs around it. Um, okay, so just before the lift, Paul. Thank you. Okay. Was that five, six, seven, eight? Yeah, sure. I'll count you in this time. Ready? And five, <laughs> six, seven, eight. So, okay, so that, that moment, sometimes it looks, it's a, looks a little rough, and I wonder if you can just, um, again, sort of give it just a, like, break it, but break it, um, break it with a bit of air, rather than <laughs> crack it, yeah. Just try. Ti-ta-ta. That's better. Ti-ta-ta. Uh, so keep, keep the movement, and don't turn too soon. Or don't turn it too soon. I think it's that's probably you. Ready and uh, T ta ta T. There we go. That's lovely. Yeah, good. Do you have what have you got there, Paul? Have you got have you got the Rons? I've got the Rons. Yeah. Have you got the Rons, Paul? Okay, that sounds good. Thanks. <laughs> um, good. Let's uh, do the same thing again. Just bring it over here so you've got the space. Um, that was better. Um, what didn't I like about that? Nothing significant. <laughs> Let's go on. Yeah. Ready? Um, yesterday in the show, it was a little bit like you were you were crushing a bug. It's a bit like it's just again. So it's got to be silvery, like silvery toe. And then when you come around here, and then um, Alex, it's just a nasty moment for her. There's a heavy foot down here after the. So you might have to just give her a tiny bit more height. There we go. Yeah, it's better, isn't it? Yeah. 
if you can make it pneumatic, if you can make it sort of a, a pneumatic one rather than a hike. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> uh, what you got in there, Paul, for us? Have you got the walks? His walks? Heel walks? Yes. Okay. okay. And. Don't pick up yet. Two, three, four, four. and five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, Do you know what? Good. That's all lovely. I think you you go too high with your leg here, which pulls you forward and um, too far. I think if you just if you think of resisting, maybe keeping your back up and not letting your leg go so high, so we get we get more um, Iron Woman, hear me roar, arabesque rather than rather than delicate. Yeah. Can we be? Can we be more there? That's it. It should be, it should be quite, I think, quite powerful that moment. Yeah? Yeah. Up, up the body. Yeah, you're too far forward. Hello over there. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> should we, um, should we go from coming up off the floor? Bum, 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 where that rhythm comes in? How am I doing and for time? Okay. Well, we're almost at the end, so I'll just let you go to the end. Okay, here we go. Coming up. Two, two, three. Really good. Just, just right here, just the last six before. Di -ga -di -da. Yeah, so it's just going to the arabesque, guys. So we're ready and. see them tomorrow if you, <laughs> you can get tickets, they're very popular. Um, the, they do actually this, that last step so beautifully, the, the idea was always this sort of um, equal partnership um, and the fact that in order to achieve that pull off, can you just show that, that last, the last part, they actually have to trust each other enough to kind of pull away from each other in order to create the tension. So now pull, now pull up, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You were just all on your leg and pretty, and, like, and he fell, and you were just on your leg. That was an equal partnership, Arne. Ready? Already you should be going. Already you should be going. Already. Should... It's still that's not equal partnership because you're on your leg. Do you know what you understand what I mean, right? That you should, as he's going to, as he, as that foot's going up, you should already be pulling. Oh God, goodness, sorry, that's quite hard. <laughs> <laughs> you should be pulling back. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be fair. Now I understand. To be, to be fair, Christopher, you have had a broken foot. Oh, this is true. Back, 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 back. Mm, do you know what, when you did it, and I didn't talk about it, it was fabulous. <laughs> and it should be that you're, as you're going up, you're already going back. So you, it's, like a, it's like his counterbalance, like figurehead of a ship. His counter, he's the figurehead and you're the sail. And you create that tension between you, and then you have to fall. What it isn't is that you're balancing yourself on him, and then he goes, bye bye and you're all there perfect, and off you go. Yeah, anyway, enough. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I know that's very special to get that intimate um, and up close feeling. Thank you both for that. Um, we had a little clip of Alice. Would that be a good place to start again? And we're going to have a bit of a talk about sure. um, uh, the Winter's Tale and you as a choreographer. So could we could we have a look at that work to take us back into the discussion? question to both Chris and to you, Jackie, uh, but you'll have some time to think about it. So it's six years, six years since that ballet was made. How do you feel when you look at it now? Oh, um, it's quite hard I, for me, and I've heard, I've heard other choreographers, other artists actually say the same thing. When you look back, um, you see, you know, and you've, you've, you've come along, you've developed, you've, your taste has changed, your um, you know, hopefully you've, you've grown and, and uh, your theatrical ideas are sort of I mean, coming, perhaps coming into, into, uh, into more clarity. Um, I, I, do, I do sometimes go back to works like Alice and think um, I would do that probably very differently now. Um, and, I, and I tend to also be quite a bad um, audience member for my own work because Super critical. I'm very critical and I and I start to unravel things a little bit and um, so so I guess guess keep your way. It's been no, it's you know I'm getting better at it. You know I'm, I I and and I'm very much about. I do go back and make changes. We made quite a lot of changes on Alice after the first season. Um, it was only in two acts originally. Now it's in three acts and not. I didn't add material. I just we just found a place to put an intermission. Um, and we're always working on it, every time we do it. We're working on developing the characters further, helping the dancers understand. The clearer it becomes to, to me and to us, or I should say to us, because Jackie's such a huge part of that process, then, um, you know, sometimes little things, little new ideas kind of spring up. Jackie will tell you, and it, it's quite irritating for her, <laughs> although she's very good humoured about it, that I will sometimes go somewhere when she's not there, like last week I was down with Australian Ballet working with them on Alice and you know I changed a few things and sh now I go off back to um, uh, back to, to, to London and Jackie goes down and she'll have to deal with the you know you figuring out well just figuring out you know wh whether I really meant that change or not because sometimes I don't mean them and um, so it's if you've forgotten something if you've forgotten a, a timing of something you'll just change it and, and make it something else sometimes <laughs> so that's my danger but, on the other hand, um, anything that Chris has made, change-wise, there's always been for the benefit of it. And mm. every time we go, it's getting better and better and better. Mm. So, I love it. I, I can't, it's I just can't, a beautiful ballet. I can't imagine your job, Jackie. It's so difficult, because you have to, in restaging, you yeah. have to know the ballet, every movement of every person it's, on that stage. It's stressful, mm. I must say. Look, doing this, Winter's Tale this time, Chris wasn't with us in London. So by the time we got here and Chris was coming in, I'm thinking, what have I forgotten? You know, what have I missed? What have I... Um, but it's, you know, you can only do your best, can't you? Yeah. And, and you, have, you have such a symbiotic relationship, don't you? You really are very aligned. I've well, noticed that. We, um, we had... You know, a ridiculous amount of fun making Alice in Wonderland. Oh. It was really... Winter's Tale was 
quite hard, wasn't it? Winter's well, Tale was really hard because, well, for the obvious reasons that, you know, the, 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 there's A, there's a lot riding on it. Um, it's a complex story. Uh, the schedule at the time was very, was very, um, it was very difficult to get things in order. So we were making pieces completely out of order. I mean, we would be, we do a Perdita solo in Act Two, and then we go, you know, for an, uh, two hours into the next room, and we do Leontes, you know, Leontes Madness, and mm. then we'd go, and I think we even had to do some of Act Three before we'd finished Act Two, and so it was, it was a big jigsaw like, puzzle, and we really yes. didn't know yeah. if it was gonna fit together. Mm. Um, it's interesting, so let's go back to Winter's Tale. I saw in an interview, um, uh, that uh, when you were working with the composer that you actually locked yourselves away together for about three days and when you came out of that in fact you had the blueprint for what you wanted to do and uh, I know that people are often interested to know what comes first mm. the choreography or the music and can you talk a little about that yeah process? I mean in this in this case it was Joby and I are also great friends we've collaborated now um, several times um, and we're about to do it again in a couple couple of years for the Royal again. Um, so we have a very good relationship and we have fun together. And so we, um, along with, with um, Joby's uh, wife, Liz, and my husband, Ross, we found a little house by the sea and we all went there. And we did the most painful, like six hour reading of the play, the four of us. It, when it was only painful because we were so dreadful. <laughs> we were such, and because of, you know, I studied Shakespeare a little bit at school, but um, I don't really understand a lot of it. And it's a very, it's a very, very yeah, tricky play. It's a tricky, knotty play. It's, yeah. um, so we were just going, oh God, cliff notes. Has anyone got the cliff notes? Um, and so, so we, we read it, and you know, I made the big mistake of casting you know, my husband as Leontes, and he'll be the first to tell you. He didn't study Shakespeare at all, so he didn't know where the phrase began and where it ended, and we were just going, what? What's he saying? Um, so it was, it was quite, it was quite, quite a, a, a marathon. Um, but we also ha had some fantastic um, videos of, you know, we had a Royal Shakespeare Company um, DVD, we had an old BBC uh, version, um, we, uh, Jovi and I went to see several productions of it, um, and then luckily we had enough people around us who knew the play very well, so Sir Nicholas Heitner, who was actually the person that suggested mm -hmm. Winter's Tale to me, one, one, of, one of, if not the great, um, Shakespearean director of our time, I think, I believe anyway. Um, he, he, he worked um, with me on it a little bit as well, so we had really, really good, smart people around mm. to help us figure out how to do it. Um, it must have been, um, Kevin, for you when they had this jigsaw going. I mean, it must be pretty nerve-wracking as the director when so much is riding on it. How do you work with them as group? Just support? Yeah, really it is about support and, and giving them the freedom. I think if you, I firmly believe if you, if you give a commission to a choreographer, then that is your, your their permission for them then to create the way they need to create and not to be going, oh, mm. what's that? What, why are you doing that? Oh, we can't afford it. You, you know, there's a budget and there's all of those things. But we try not to, once we've said, okay, this is it, now it's, it's your time to mm. be in the studio and, and develop the, those ideas. Mm. And uh, it's, it's hard as well because we do it, uh, the two, Alice and the Winter's Tale, we've, we've done with the National Ballet of Canada as co-productions, mm. and they're great partners. And uh, the, and the super to work with, and sometimes I play on that a little bit, you know, and say, "Oh, Canada really wants to know this," <laughs> and, you, <laughs> and, uh, and really, it's I want to know. But I, 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 I you know, I should say that. No, 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 we know. Very good. Very good. But, uh, Thank you. Um, Christopher, you're 43, I think it's okay to be 44. 44, 44 yeah. Yeah, although yes. in the program it says I'm 42, so I love her. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. That's Rebecca Lemoyne who <laughs> made that note. Um, she'll, she'll be paid later. Um, so you were very young to give up dancing and to become a choreographer, and you've achieved a lot. Um, how did that happen? How do you make that decision at what, 28? 28, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I'd had an amazing time. I danced with the Royal Ballet for two years. I was quite injured over the course of those two years. And then I got my job, decided to, 
you know, I was very lucky. I got a job um, quite by accident with the New York City Ballet. That's another story, and it's a long one, but it involves a Hoover and a free ticket to New York. And, uh, and it's for the memoir. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I, I just sort of fell into, into a job, just going, I went out for a week's holiday and suddenly found myself on the first day of being in New York with an offer for a contract with New York City Ballet. And I thought, wow, this is, I hadn't thought that I would leave the Royal Ballet, but this seems like an amazing city and I'm 19 and, and I've been with, within the same organization, even, you know, since, since I was eight, I started training at the Royal Ballet School when I was eight years old. So um, it just seemed like too great an opportunity and, and fate, just the way it all happened, it was meant to be, so. Um, so then I danced with the New York City Ballet for seven years, and it's the most brutal schedule of any ballet company um, uh, I know. Um, you're sometimes, sometimes doing up to, well they just did, I think, 40 ballets this past season. Sometimes you're learning ballets in the morning that you're performing, you're performing in the evening. The programs at that point were never the same. Now they have sort of slightly more blocked programming, but it was, every night was a different program. Mm -hmm. And Robbins was still alive, and I wanted to work with, because I just, Kenneth Millen died my first year in the, in the Royal Ballet, um, and, and Robbins was the last of that generation, he was the last great ballet choreographer of that generation. So that was a, you know, a big plus, and I got to work with him, and they worked me really hard, and I, at 28, I was like, I'm done. I've danced so much with this wonderful company. I've worked with so many you know, wonderful, we did, made a lot of new work as well, um, and I had all these opportunities to choreograph and my body was hurting and I knew I wasn't going to become a principal. I was, you know, a very good soloist, um, strong, but my career just wasn't heading that way. And so I thought, well, okay, that seems like a good time to maybe say... A brave decision, but in hindsight, the right decision. Yeah, I think so. And I do, I did miss it a lot for the first five or six years. Yes. Um, uh, and every now and then I see them up there and I think, oh... That hurts. That looks like it hurts. <laughs> I don't want to do that. No, no that's not that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and I do, I still dance. I mean, I dance in the studio um, every day with them when I'm creating, so. Mm. Uh, let's just, before we call the next dancer in, let's just talk for a moment about a winter style. I mean, it's a brave choice as well, because it's not a very nice play in many parts, no. is it? You know, I mean, no. yeah. I think it's the, for me, um, I mean, it, it offers so much, um, scope for, uh, you know, pretty intense drama, um, the pure, uh, the pure joy, celebration of music and dance of the second act, and the fact that it's such a, re a redemptive ending, and we made it, you know, we really, we, I decided that Hermione, there should be a, a feeling of real forgiveness. Some directors like to stage the play where you're never really sure, I mean, she doesn't really speak to him, in fact, I don't think she does speak to him. Um, somebody here could probably correct me. She, she doesn't, no. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So, and some, some directors choose to stage it where you're left kind of going, oh, is, has she forgiven? Is there forgiveness here? Is there, is there hope? And, and I felt that it was important that there was potential for maybe a friendship or something, who knows? Um, but I did. Uh, decide along with Bob Crowley we had this sort of epiphany one day where you know it can't all be you know love and hope and joy at the end and and that's when we came up with the idea of having the statue of not just of not just of Hermione but of Hermione and Mamilius mm -hmm. and that the statue of the dead child is the, the reminder is the that reminder this, that this, this has been a sin that it will never be okay yeah you know? and in fact there's this beautiful quote that I found in a, an article by the New Yorker and it says that Winter's Tale is actually one of Shakespeare's most realistic plays. Um, and it says here, one of his saddest. And this writer says, Wielden's ballet is his sadness and his most profound. And then just the word sin, comma, inexplicable. And you know, this notion that it can never be erased. Right. That child is there. Now I have a personal question and that is, did you intentionally choreograph uh, the flirt any flirtation between Hermione and Polixenes? No, um, n not. See, I'm over reading it. N not. Mm. Um, well, here's the thing. I mean, I think their relationship is 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 so 
uh, be um, obviously becomes very, very twisted and contorted in the eye mm. of, um, of Leontes, in the eyes of Leontes. Um, but no, it's it's a it's a it's a real it's a real friendship. They're very close, and mm. and um, uh, and if that's it, sometimes it creeps in with performances, mm. though. Sometimes, I did see it. I I yeah. Saw it. Sometimes um, we kind of have to rein that in a little bit. Right. But, yeah. Should we bring the next? Yeah, let's do that. Let's bring Claire in. Like so, that. Yeah. <laughs> it's not so great. So, so this is Claire. Claire Calvert. Yes. Yeah. So. Claire's had a, a somewhat sort of roller coaster of a few days because her partner Tiago, she was supposed to dance in the matinee yesterday, her pa partner Tiago injured himself in rehearsal the day before and isn't going to be able to dance Leontes. So she missed her first performance, but she's dancing tomorrow matinee with uh, uh, Ryuichi um, Hirano, who has learned the role in two days. Well, actually, kind of a day and a half, really, if you sort of think about it. Jackie's been busy teaching him, and um, it's kind of an ext I mean, it says so much about, about the dancers in this company, um, but also about dancers, ballet dancers in general. The speed at which they absorb information, the dedication to their to their to their their art, to their craft, because um, it's a brutal role psychologically and physically for those of you that have seen it. Um, and um, he's just he just ran they ran the first act and it's going to be spectacular. He's going to be wonderful. So um, Claire's already done this once for me this this afternoon and it was it was fab. But now I'm just going to pick it all apart. So <laughs> this is. <laughs> This is the um, this is Hermione's trial solo um, uh, when she pleads her innocence to the court and to um, and to Leontes and in a, in you know one of the most beautiful parts of the play in such a dignified um, and elegant um, and powerful way um, she she can't she like the rest of the court, can't quite fathom why Leontes is, is, is behaving this way. And she fears, there's a moment, for me anyway, within the solo where she realises um, uh, her potential fate um, at the hands of her now crazy husband. So, um, let's do it. <laughs> Stop there, and we're just going to talk a, a, about a couple of things. Good, well done, Claire. Lovely, yeah, beautiful. Really good. So, just see, so this this first step is. Um, have I got the right arm? Yeah. Sometimes I tell you, I don't even know my own choreography. Um, this, so you've lost your baby and you've lost your emerald. The emerald is something that we added. Shakespeare did not write the emerald into Winter's Tale, but the emerald is a device that we use to help the audience understand the connection between um, 
Hermione and Perdita, and when um, uh, when Hermione's in prison, Paulina takes the emerald and uh, and puts it in the in the basket with the baby and sends the baby uh, and the baby gets sent off to to Bohemia. And so on her sixteenth birthday in Bohemia, Perdita is given the jewel that, it, that the shepherd finds with the baby. Um, so jewel is gone, baby's gone, and. This moment, if you can, as you're taking these steps, if you can just, it's becoming just a bit sort of Paul O'Brien, rather than, than I, if, if you can communicate that, the, the nakedness of not having this jewel that represents his love for you, it, it's gone, gone, gone. Yeah, rather than it becoming yeah. actually a step, yeah, yeah um, then, this was something, a note that I meant to give you earlier, actually. It's the, just on the first, this first boray. Can you try to make it a little bit more semicircular? And what else? Do you mean semicircular upstairs? Yes. Or do you mean semicircular no, I mean semi round coming this yeah. way a little bit should too? Se should, uh, yeah, not that big, but it, should, it needs a little bit of a semicircle to get you around. That's it. There you go. Because it should be that, remember that originally, that was pleading to the court. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, careful, these don't get sexy. They're getting a bit sexy. Yeah. Not a sexy moment. It, 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 should, it should be a little bit, and you know how Leontes has those really, it's, the, it's a little bit more the weight of, of, um, of the accusation. Yeah, see so if you can get my thoughts after that. It's go, go, bum. Go, go, bum is lovely. Um, we call this Go Go Bum because she has to go 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 Bum to get her feet turned out. <laughs> um, this is a very odd step to ask to ask a ballerina to go turned in on point and then and then turn out on point. It's really tricky, but if you Go Go Bum, it works. Um, this can have just a little bit more um, spiral to it. Yeah, let's go from. Needs to pick up. Yeah. Just a fraction. You don't point your foot as you bring it through. No. Mm. That toe, that right toe, just as you're closhing it. Yeah, you're doing a little flexy. Point it. I think, can I just say something yeah. about that? I don't think the turn is there. You're no, turning no, no. there. Well, it's, it's got to go there. The turn has to happen out. Pass it, yeah. Pass see, this is what, I'm going to show you what I see. And then I'm going to show you what I want. I see <laughs> that, which is quite hard because it pushes your pelvis back. And I want that. Let's not talk about it. We'll talk, yeah. <laughs> not your favourite step, I know. Let's just do, 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 how about you do like half of what you want to do and half of what I want. <laughs> and then we'll just see how that, how that works. Um, let's do it one more time. Um, we don't need all that intro. Just the eight before. Just the eight before, thanks. Ready? Good, that was lovely. That was re really useful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. So it's my wrists have been bound, and and then as that comes in, just that's where I want. I think you just actually have to maybe make a bit more shape in your back. 
a bit more shape in your back as you turn. Better. Did I didn't see Gogo Bum? I just saw. Bum? No, I just saw Pump Pump or something. Yeah. <laughs> Do those need a bit more pick up? Tiny. Tiny bit. Yeah. They need to go a little bit They're wider. They're going to need to go wider because, because when you end up pleading, you're in all yeah. sort of a bad first. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Are you, are you resisting anything there? Like, do you actually resist? Are you resisting the top hand with the bottom hand? Like, resist, res resist that way. Do you know what I mean? So, so they don't just do that, they go, like, Catch make it. it hard for that hand to come in. That's okay. it. They, now you make the shape. Yeah. Because you can actually, you can push against your own hand. Yeah. And then just, just go, woof. Yeah. I mean, don't go woof. But. <laughs> go, go, bum. Straight on it. Ready? And. There you go. Okay, it's very simple. Oh, yeah. What's happening there, Jack? Just like that. <laughs> just as you turn around. Just I think they all go too them. high with their leg. Yeah, I think you all get greedy up. and go, whoa, and then fall. I think it's got to be simple. So that you come to a place where now this should be so simple. Quiet. Quiet dignity. Yeah. Uh, second go-go bum. Also, not a very dignified term for a very dignified solo. <laughs> Ready, and. Yes. Lovely, Claire. Good. Very nice. Um, can you just show the wed wedding vow briefly? So, okay. Let's go slowly. I want anyone who wants to do the wedding vow with us, feel free to <laughs> do the wedding vow. Just careful not to elbow the person next to you in, in the head. So, let's do the wedding. You've got to be in front of me because I don't know it. It's, it's in fr front first, isn't it? So, are we in front now? Yeah. Then we slide, slide the arm so the other arm ends up behind. Then we break the, the elbow and then we pull the elbow across. Okay, I only see three people doing it. <laughs> I mean, don't be a lazy audience. Let's get going here. Let's do a bit of wedding bow, okay? So, so. <laughs> there we go. Now keep the arms in contact. So slide one up over to the other side. So you make the same shape on the other side. I'm not showing that well here. Then you break the elbow. And then the arm comes across. Fantastic. You all got the job. Um, so you'll see that quite a few times in the ballet. It's, it's right at the very beginning, during the prologue, there's a moment where uh, Hermione and Leontes get married and they do that, that little motif. It's a dance motif. Um, in this solo, she's reminding Leontes of their wedding vow. So it comes back again here. And then in the very, 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 very and in the nursery. And in the nursery. Yeah. Keeps popping up. And then at the, in, the, in the very final um, duet of re reconciliation, uh, she once again reminds him of their vow. And he, he breaks down. And she, in, in a moment of real forgiveness, she goes over and she takes his arms and she makes the wedding vow with his arms. So, that's, that's what that is. And people, quite a few people have asked me, what is that thing they do? What are they doing? Um, that's what it is. 
Uh, well done. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thanks so much, Claire. We know what a big day you've had. So thank you. Um, we, we don't have the mics out here, but uh, we I will. Yes, we do. Oh, yes, there they are. Um, we know that people have questions, and this is a lovely part of it. So, is there a question? Yes, right up the back. Can, um, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm really interested in the right angle of the feet. The lady wanted to, to understand, to know a little bit more about the, the flex feet motifs in the in the piece and how they crop up. And um, I mean, really, it's uh, I suppose it's it's mostly used. Um, there's a lot in this in the second act. The the uh, the Bohemians. Uh, it's sort of there's a lot of kind of folky grounded that comes from sort of folk folk dance. Um, but also Paulina has um, a, a, a similar motif where she walks backwards on point, uh, flexing her feet. So, you know, in the case of Paulina, it was really just coming up with a, with a, with a movement motif that suggested her, um, and you know, it's very hard to describe. It's just, it felt to me like it was a, um, the repetitiveness of it, the, uh, the, the technique is very, very difficult. I think her fortitude, perhaps. Um, but actually to do that step, even though it's not a typical um, firework virtuosic step in ballet, like fouettes or pirouettes or whatever, it's really, really challenging. And it, and, it, and it forces them to be really controlled and quite contained. And I think... Um, stoic. Stoic. Yeah, mm. it's a it's a it's a, it's a, a step, of, step. It's a stoic step, a step of stoicism. Step um, yeah. um, a, a learned friend of ours last night, I think I was talking to you about it before, said it's wonderful to watch um, her transformation from servant to warrior woman, and there's there's almost that in yeah. that step, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, certainly. Mm. I mean, she is fierce and fiercely um, compassionate as well um, to to have. Whatever happens in those 16 years, when we were talking about that earlier, it would make a fabulous play. Somebody could write that play, you know, the Hermione Paulina story. What, what really happened? Where did they really go? Did she hide her? What, was she in the castle? Yeah, where, where was she for 16 years? Um, but uh, that, that, I mean, I suppose that leads me to say there, therein kind of lies the challenge of turning a play into a ballet. You don't want to just tell the story, you want to look for clues within the, within the prose. Um, that would that might help then suggest a movement vocabulary. There's a, there's a moment in, in the very very first moment of, of jealousy for Leontes comes from um, a, a very famous line in the in the um, in the play about having seen I've seen and drunk the spider, drunk and seen the spider, seen and oh I get it the wrong way around all the time. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Always someone who knows. So so the spider. Um, is a very uh, strong image within within um, the ballet, and you know it just so happens that Edward Watson has the most dexterous fingers, and they're they're almost sort of double jointed, and so we that's how we came up with this idea of perhaps that's where the infection of jealousy begins. It actually begins in his in his hand, and then that's that spider then pierces the body, and then the, then the sort of a flushing of jealousy physically through the body. So that was kind of. Um, a nice, nice clue, very helpful clue from, um, from the Bard. There's a wonderful, um, on YouTube, there's a wonderful piece with you and Joby and an actor reading that scene and you actually working. Yeah, um, yeah. With him. Well, actually, that was one of, the, one of the best things we did was um, uh, Nicholas Heitner, the director that I was talking about earlier, arranged for some of the actors who had performed Winter's Tale at the National Theatre to come in on our very first day of rehearsal and read key scenes of the play. And we just sat, you know, we sat in a mm. semicircle and it just, it just came to life. And for me as well, you know, I sort of knew where I was going, you know, structurally and story-wise, but um, just having those great actors, because I mean, there was great act mm. actors, wasn't it? Mm. Alex Jennings mm. and really top-notch people. Um, yeah. Do we have any other questions? Yes, um, Jasmine. Great. I'll just repeat it so that everyone's heard it. Um, Jasmine said she was really glad that 
they meant, that um, Christopher mentioned the wedding, um, the wedding movements, and was there a particular reason for the choice of those movements? You know, not really. Except now, thinking back, it's sort of the uh, the idea of certainly of of, of something s somewhat religious, um, and um, the idea of you know. Um, I swear. I swear. So. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. ballet, that's yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. In that's in ballet, my traditional ballet mind, that's I swear. So sort of in a sort of similar way, and perhaps man woman connection, never breaking connection, forever we'll be together. It's just sort of yeah. That's how those things kind of come up. Um, it's tricky to find movements for for words, but in that case, we we sort of were, were able to you know come up with something that. Suggested it anyway. And how different will the versions of the Australian ballet be? Um, Did it, everyone hear the question? Sorry. So, so what, how what, different will the Alice version that the Australian ballet is rehearsing now be from the one at Covent Garden? Um, it won't be very different at all, actually. It'll be, um, you know, as I said, we've, it's been a while since we've done Alice at the Opera House, and we do it in September again. So we will have just performed it in the Australian ballet. We will have just performed it. We will have put it on the stage just, there and then we go back to London and put, sort, and put it on stage in London. Um, so just the little things that may have been, have been sort of altered along the way, so sort of tidying up, tightening and um, f f fleshing out of characters, but for the most part it's the same production. Um, uh, same scenery, costumes, lighting, music, choreography, yeah. Questions, yes? So just a comment about tense to all uh, hints. We take yeah. that as a comment. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, thank you. No, that's no. I, I did know that actually. Um, no, it, it's that was a, that was also a challenge. That's why we chose really to um, to have the prologue sequence because um, it's very difficult without you know re reading the program notes to understand that um, that Polixenes has been at the court for nine months. So that's why we have the seeds. We have the sort of the four seasons in that opening the sequence mm -hmm. and the you know the the, the friendship of the three of them. Um, uh, 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 the three of them together, and of course the, the you know the growing, growing belly, child. the growing belly of, of, of Hermione. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to add one one thing. One of the huge challenges, and I think in the end was sort of, sort of paid off for us at the ballet, was of course in the play all of the key dramatic moments, the big moments, um, happen off stage and are commented on by courtiers from. Uh, um, uh, from from you know from either 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 land, um, and of course we it's very hard to show something that's happening off stage it's or have somebody come on and, have somebody come on and comment in, in a ballet. Um, so, you, so we had to show the death of Amelius, we, which was terrifying to come up with that in in the room, wasn't it? It was mm. just sort of how do you mm. choreograph that? Um, and uh, and of course the the supposed death of Hermione and the reunion. Between, which for me feels like in the play feels like such an anticlimax, not to see the re the the, um, the the moment of um, um, Leontes discovering that Perdita is actually his daughter. Mm. Um, it, it always sort of felt a little um, underwhelming. Somehow. Um, talk about being an active listener, watcher. Last night, as um, Mamilius was coming down those stairs, I felt like screaming, "Go back!" You don't yeah. see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, is there, are there any yeah, other questions? Yes, down the front. Personally, what's been your favourite role or part that you've performed as in a ballet production? Right. Just the question is, what was Christopher's favourite role that he's ever performed in? Um, I have two favourite roles. Um, my, fa my, my first favourite role was, um, was uh, Benvolio in Romeo and Juliet. I didn't stay around in the Royal Ballet long enough to actually get to dance the role of Romeo, but I did dance Benvolio and I was picked by Sir Kenneth MacMillan and he, it was one of the last, it was, I think it must have been in that last season um, before he passed away, so that was, that was a big deal for me. And then um, I, was, I also absolutely loved dancing one of the three sailors in Fancy Free, Jerome Robbins' ballet Fancy Free. And he, he cast me, or he actually had me under, learn it, understudy it, right when I joined the New York City Ballet. And um, I understudied it for the eight years that I danced with the New York City Ballet, and then finally my last season, of course he, he, he was gone by then as well, but finally by my last season I actually got to dance it, and it was an absolute joy, an absolute joy. Beautiful. So yeah. I'm sorry, our time is up. 
And I, I'm going to bring it to a close by, a close by um, quoting from Baryshnikov, you know, that, that little dancer. Um, and uh, he said this about you. He said that Wilden would, would make a truly great choreographer when he discovered what he wanted to say. With The Winter's Tale and American in Paris, Wilden has found his ability as a storyteller, and there is no doubt about that. And far more exciting than the Tony Flummeries will be the stories he chooses to tell next. We can't wait. We want you back in Australia, all of you. It's been such a joy. Please thank them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.